welcome everybody to, to this uh, panel discussion. Uh, this is one that I'm kind of really excited about because, you know, when Carl and Tom and myself sort of initiated this whole IGC uh, organization, one of the things at the root of it was the ability to share amongst educators. You know, this belief Carl talked about yesterday um, that, that we need 10,000 people worldwide that can do this. So Carl and I were also in a discussion a few weeks ago uh, with an engineer from the American Society of Civil Engineers who uh, said that they had done a similar study. How many engineers does the world want? And they, want, they came up with a number like 10 million rather than 10,000. Uh, I'm going to push Carl's number further <laughs> to say... 10,000 is old thinking. We need 100,000. In order to do that, we as educators, most of us are educators, we need to learn from each other and to push these agendas as fast as we possibly can. So I'm excited about this. Uh, I have to say I'm particularly excited. Tiana was the one that initiated this idea. Um, and I, before this, uh, before uh, the recent break session or the recent breakout rooms, I was going to be able to say that this is a, a unique in another kind of way because it's a very specially kind of IGC uh, oriented panel that um, I have met Jennifer uh, several times face to face through IGC meetings. I have only met Tiana through Zoom, and that was through, uh, initially at a, at a different meeting. I, I met her in, a, in one of those random breakout rooms at uh, the Digital Landscape Architecture meeting uh, a year or so ago. Uh, and until this recent breakout room, I had only ever met Moika via email. And as many of you know, I am the mysterious person who is the IGC email. So. Uh, but then in the breakout room, there was Moika. So now I have met her uh, through Zoom as well. But uh, I am going to let the three panelists uh, or the three organizers of this panel, uh, Tiana, Moika and Jennifer, introduce the other panelists. But um, like I say, I'm really excited about this. Please uh, make sure you remain muted during this uh, session. Um, and please also both you know put questions into the chat box uh, if you've been in the session where i am you know that i am annoying at using the uh, the chat box as much as i can but please you you do it too because it's a really good record of you know the thoughts that are going through people's minds and it, and it helps us think about the future planning of of igc and we will um if we have time at the end we you know we'll be encouraging uh, the panelists to kind of respond to your questions that you put in the chat box. So oh, yeah. with no more, I am going to pass everything over to Tiana. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thanks uh, to, to the panelists for accepting the invitation and thanks to um, to all the colleagues for, for joining to joining us. And um, I have to say my, my role here is a bit of a twofold. First, I will uh, explain the purpose. Um, I will share my screen. So I will first explain the purpose of the panel and together with my student, Bojana, we will share our Serbian experience. And then I will invite Moitza, Luke, and Jennifer to share their much richer experience in geodesign education from Slovenia and California. And this is supposed to initiate uh, conversations, hopefully also some new ideas and uh, activities. So uh, I will, uh, this is going to be the structure, as I, as I said, and uh, uh, what it's also good to know is that this is an educator's perspective and uh, my colleague Boyana will share her student's perspective on the, on our experience. So allow me to present and elaborate the core idea of the panel. Core idea is that geodesign education can be improved through quality supported interplay between certain principles and contexts. And now allow me to elaborate on this. So I think that uh, in, in any kind of uh, improvement, uh, we need to be inspired by others. We need to be reflexive of our own practices and we need to identify where revisions are needed and to aspire to improvements. And in, in order to introduce those improvements, we need to be committed, but we also need to be supported by others. Uh, so what were my inspirations and, and reflections? Um, I am a member of the uh, Excellence in Education Board of the Association of European Schools of Planning. And for a couple of years, I'm involved in the quality recognition program. 
It seeks to improve planning, research, and education practices of the member schools of ESOP. And uh, it presents a structured quality support based uh, uh, um, a process on selected principles, dialogue, peer learning, and sharing of, of best uh, uh, practices. And um, these are the selected uh, principles, the quality recognition uh, uh, for, for planning programs. They in include, for example, interdisciplinarity exposing to global context. I will not go through the whole list. I will invite you uh, to uh, go to the survey after this panel and to uh, perhaps test your own geodesign uh, education uh, on, on the lines of these, on the, of these principles. And uh, what, was, um, uh, what was really important uh, in, in, the, in initiating this process is that uh, ASOP is an international association of uh, schools really recognize its capacity to moderate mutual learning processes about best pedagogical practices among the schools of planning with different planning environments and cultures and systems. And I do think that international geodesign collaboration is a similar kind of uh, uh, association of, uh, uh, of uh, schools uh, of design and, and planning, and we can do something similar. We do have geodesign principles. Uh, they are rooted in the Steinitz uh, framework we all use. Uh, for example, we have embedded evaluation, impact assessments, different scenarios, may, uh, scenario making, collaborative and iterative land use planning. And I will invite you there also in the survey so you can test uh, geodesign education on the experience on those uh, uh, principles as well. So uh, we also know that the, there is a sharing of experiences, reflections and aspirations with regard to pedagogical practices and curriculum development and improvements within the community. And um, this was, I think, very important uh, to, uh, to explain the experience from the University of Belgrade, Serbia, especially since we went to the new um, accreditation cycle, which allowed us to uh, improve our spatial planning program at the Faculty of Geography. And uh, knowing the quality recognition and geodesign principles to me, it seemed obvious uh, to uh, integrate geodesign as a land use planning studio at the undergraduate level and geodesign as an elective course at the graduate, uh, graduate level. So that was, the, that was an important step. But we didn't want to wait uh, for it because we will have to wait for four years to, for this studio. We decided to do an experiment this year, but we'll hopefully do it next year also. But I'm going to reflect on our uh, experiment, uh, experiment from, from this semester. Uh, so our uh, interplay between principles and context really had to look into the context, which is uh, in the social uh, um, uh, aspect, it's um, about passivization, manipulation, autocratic corrupted regime uh, within the planning uh, arena. We, are, uh, the, we have dominant national pro-rich, midterm, one direction planning. We have planners and academics uh, reduced to being state servants and the state is reduced to being uh, um, an, a tool of the ruling party. So it's a more kind of, um, kind of an urban Hungary uh, kind of situation. So it's a, it's a similar similar setting. Within the academia, I can say that we have poor integration. Well, even though we went through, through Bologna reform, there is still very slow transition towards the learning center teaching. And uh, in our own, own school, there is, a, a, I can say, poor implementation of GIS in, in courses. So what were the key principles that really need to uh, improve the situation? Is this the this global challenges in local context, especially with relation to SDGs and Trillion Trees Initiative? Uh, we were looking into collaborative, iterative, visual, digital, interdisciplinary exploration of different scenarios with different time horizon, different uh, impact. And I think, to, to, to my experience, most important thing was the very proactive and reflexive approach uh, of the students. So uh, what I can, uh, when I look to everything with that, that I said, it seems like the geodesign in education is really like an all-purpose pedagogical tool. It can uh, really fit into, like we were talking about uh, adaptability, but it's also about the needs, certain kind of frustration that drive us to embed the geodesign in the curriculum. And I have noticed this in the reading the, the literature, and uh, I think that is, that, that is um, an important uh, uh, um, thing to know. 
Uh, what about revision and uh, aspiration? I will try to make it short. This is exactly what I think I need to uh, uh, look into in the next round. I, uh, I would really hope that students will be uh, more involved in the evaluation and impact assessment and communication. And I would like to include real stakeholders in order to improve mutual learning and education. And in this, I said education uh, between the stakeholders. I think that education, we need to look into it in a more uh, wider terms uh, uh, and, and uh, not only within our, our own classrooms. Uh, so um, I need also more research, better time management. Uh, also our volunteers are very green in their mi mindsets and uh, we will need more supervised training in, in GIS. And those were the uh, aspirations. And what about commitment and support? I am committed. And I can say that looking into this conference also, I think that this is a, a constructive, supportive, uh, uh, growing community. Um, and uh, uh, in order to, to be more effective, I think we would need to look into uh, opportunities for finding open, structured spaces and processes for sharing and co-creating. So these are just a list of possibilities, uh, blogs, new newsletters, some kind of repositories. Uh, Cross-cutting and thematic group activities, meetings, Neil also mentioned some, some kind of uh, uh, regional meetings, so that, that could be looked into uh, as well. Uh, we can have invited lectures, uh, this online uh, has its uh, weaknesses, but also has its, uh, its strengths, and we should uh, uh, take advantage of this. And uh, we can have joint education ventures, initiatives addressed to other communities and stakeholders. So, and also service they I also invite you to, to fulfill. So I will give the floor to, to Boena to share her student's perspective on our experience. Boena? Uh, hello. Can you? Uh, yes. Do you hear me? Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Boena and I'm PhD student at University of Belgrade Department of Special Planning. Uh, my task here is to provide students perspective on your design workshop that was conducted at University of Belgrade this semester. And it was, as it was mentioned by professor, this was completely voluntarily based uh, workshop. So we had a pretty small group of students with different interests and preferences. In my opinion, as a student, I believe that uh, most important aspect of, of our workshop and most innovative aspect was the collaboration and knowledge sharing between students. Uh, through employing uh, interests and experiences of different students through constructing dialogue. Uh, this workshop provided us with better basis for understanding and solving problems in space. Uh, also, uh, it provided us with clear distinction between uh, how, um, how, different, uh, how different planning uh, actions or absence of them can lead to completely different outcomes in space. Uh, or as it's, uh, as it's stated here, clear distinction, distinction between passive and proactive approach. And of course, uh, I think a really important thing is possibility to reflect on design you've created and reanalyze and revalue, correct or improve what needs to be improved so you end up with best design possible in given circumstances. Can uh, I turn on? on? Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, Buena, should I move on to the next slide? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. On the left Give side, me. I just made a short reflection on uh, education quality criteria uh, provided by ISOP, which were mentioned by Professor. And this is just my assessment of uh, criteria in which I believe our workshop was uh, most, most successful. And this is understanding of global challenges, of course, in our local context. Then, of course, interdisciplinarity and active learning and employing students' diversity during the collaboration. Uh, uh, when it comes to recommendations, I believe, and I think this is opinion of some other students as well, is that we needed uh, more time uh, to practice in GeoDesign uh, Hub software uh, because we uh, lost uh, quite, a lot, uh, quite a lot of time uh, with some struggles uh, in it. And of course, uh, I believe uh, we are all highly motiv motivated to implement geodesign in our planning practice in Serbia. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you, Boina. Uh, yeah, I also need to need, need to thank uh, Rishi. He was uh, very kind and he offered uh, all the support uh, possible uh, uh, in uh, Geodesign Hub. Um, for all of you, I would like that this uh, QR is available also on the program. Uh, this is the uh, URL uh, for the survey. In the survey, you will find some general information and then you will be able to test your geodesign education uh, uh, in comparison to the uh, QR principles, the DSU principles, and also the selected principles of, of geodesign. And you will be welcomed and invited to sh uh, share anything else that was not uh, covered with the, with the survey to share your experience. You can even upload the document if, if you think so. We, we are really looking into uh, the possibility of, of, of sharing your, your ideas and, and experiences. So uh, with this, um, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to uh, uh, just to see, I'm still sharing, just to exit full screen and to uh, Moita, can I invite you to your presentation? Yes, thanks, Diana. Thanks. Will you share Please. the screen or should yeah. I? Uh, uh, am I sharing the screen now? Okay, no. I'm not. I will share the screen. Please give me signal when to move to the next slide. You don't have to, you just show the first slide. Okay. Uh, hello, <laughs> hello everybody. I'm very happy, first of all, to be invited to this panel to share my experience on teaching uh, geodesign. Uh, why do, do I, well, um, the next slide, this one is not so interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, I prepared uh, two more slides, but uh, during uh, the conference, I, I really came up with some other ideas that I think are more relevant and important. So I will not use uh, the other slides. <laughs> Okay, just a brief introduction in my geodesign experience. First year was, I, I guess, the first year of uh, uh, IGC. Uh, and I was very happy to be invited by Karl Steinitz. We, uh, our university in Ljubljana has a long standing and very fruitful relationship with Karl uh, from his Harvard years. I also spent there one semester. Uh, so, uh, but nevertheless, this first year was for us still a bit of um, um, searching what uh, IGC is all about, and we did things in a, a little bit more traditional way, but it was still very much um, GIS supported because we, we were doing this uh, planning studio before. These were all, as they mentioned in the previous uh, session, they are all uh, um, studios in uh, landscape planning for master students, first year master students of landscape architecture. But this first uh, year we had, um, I, I guess it was seven or eight students from Norway, they were Erasmus exchange students and they were special planners. And I think we had one uh, Hungarian student of ecologic planning. So it was quite an interesting mix of students, um, interdisciplinary, inter um, transnational, and uh, it was uh, good, I think quite good experience. Uh, so next year we were doing, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the scale here was regional. It was this um, um, left uh, western border of Slovenia, Posoce, Posoška region, very natural um, area on the border with Italy uh, with specific issues and problems. Next year we still were uh, doing regional scale, but there was a different region, the one in the south. Uh, and this regional uh, project was also introduced uh, in our, um, in, in, in another session uh, where students uh, presented it. Uh, and it was used for this year's um, nested um, study. Uh, and yeah, last year we, we used the Geodesign Hub as a support and we had a very, very nice experience with Carl coming into Ljubljana uh, for uh, three days or two, two days workshop, very intensive uh, workshop with students 
uh, and it it was uh, nice. Uh, so this year we did this three scale study, national, regional, from the last year, and local projects that were was presented. And we also had Carl Steinitz this time uh, in virtual form. And so um, what's what I would like really now to to say from this experience is of course what IGC uh, contributes to teaching landscape architects. Uh, first and most obvious using uh, IT. Uh, this is not so unimportant because I think it's a very um, uh, big comparative strength on so-called labor market if students can do this. And uh, I think this, this is good. Um, this year with um, Corona, we saw that it's also very easy to move everything online because, you know, with all these uh, computers, uh, every student could uh, sit behind own screen, use own computer, and it was everything was interchangeable and uh, with reasonably good uh, internet connection, uh, everything went quite smooth but it doesn't really uh, replace personal uh, touch, I would say, uh, teacher-student uh, interaction. And I think this was quite uh, obvious from, I mentioned having Karl last year in person in class because it was really something different with all his energy, everybody who knows him uh, can agree that it's something special to have Karl in the classroom. And this year, uh, although it was his, his uh, inputs were very good, but it, it was just not the same. And I can probably guess that for other teachers, it's, it's better if we have students in the classroom. Uh, but um, OK, uh, the next thing I, I think it's probably the most important thing with the IGC or geodesign approach is uh, we can it's it's a tool to teach students how to handle really complex problems because I, I have some experience teaching and planning and I haven't come across any any other approach until now that would be so uh, effective in this it's structured it's um, it's comprehensive and it really helps uh, doing this. Uh, of course, it uses some approaches that can be seen elsewhere, like um, scenario thinking. This is, this is not um, uh, uh, this geodesign innovation, but how they are embedded in, in, in uh, all sequence of steps, I think this is really good. And uh, in particular, uh, the relation or synthesis of evaluation and innovation. Uh, this is I think a real strength of the geo design uh, that students uh, learn how to use evaluation in the uh, process of designing and uh, to support their innovative ideas and to reflect on them. And this, I think, it's 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 really good. Um, a, Next, uh, collaboration, of course, this is another rather obvious thing, but uh, here I, I, I think, and that was mentioned uh, many times in, in this conference, that a mix of different um, stakeholders would do even better here. So if we didn't have only students, or if you don't have only um only state uh, authorities or only local people but a mix of different audiences i think this experience would have been even even better even stronger uh so this maybe is something to to look forward to to try to to do um maybe something that was that is still a bit missing is how to uh, ground uh, the geodesign exercise in, in reality. I think that students 
of course, they like to play with polygons. It's so easy to, to draw one polygon here and to remove another polygon there. And you know, they kind of forget what they are playing with. So kind of reality checks, I think would be useful to see or to, to, to get some kind of instant feedback what they've really done. We've tried to do this with our nested, uh, nested study, but uh, as today started to, to explain, I'm not sure whether we were so successful. Maybe it was because we were two teachers with two different approaches. Mine was more planning, more uh, geodesign aligned. And Davar, he was with us yesterday, he's teaching design. He's maybe more a uh, traditional design approach. And what actually happened was that they designed their sites, as you can see, this, um, these sites are shown here, in a more traditional design approach. And then they try to retrofit them into uh, geo design um, um, color schemes. And they had problems with thinking, what, what is the scenario? What does adopter mean? What does non-adopter mean? You know, they just designed their best preferred design. It's our, it's, it's my design versus geo design. And mm -hmm. this is, as today said, it's not just the question of detail or the size of the area, but the question of, of thinking what, what are the solutions and how to come to, to a solution. And this is, this is really different. And I think this is, this is also a challenge if we want to use geodesign in all different um, scales. Um, do I have one more minute just to mention? Yes, please. Please, single last single thing. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. Uh, I think we haven't talked talked much about theory here, but I do teach theory class parallel to studio theory in planning, theory and methods of special planning, and I I see geo design as a perfect example of something that can uh, that, that can illustrate um, a, a rather new approach, even a theoretic one. What I, what I mean with this is that we had this rational paradigm, rational planning, uh, very uh, evidence-based scientific truth and so on. Then we have this um, um, participative paradigm, relativistic, uh, all opinions matter, everything uh, is equally important and so on. And it, it, I don't think it worked that well. We have this participation all over and we have participation fatigue and everything. So we have to have something that goes beyond both these approaches. Uh, and I think geodesign is, is going into this direction. I, I don't want to elaborate <laughs> much uh, on, but I think it's, it's quite a good um, um, way of, of thinking, maybe to ground geodesign also in the theory a little bit better. And the last uh, thing I would have is uh, to do more of, a, this was already mentioned sometimes, more of a transnational, uh, transdisciplinary uh, studies, maybe to link um, cross-border um, neighboring countries and try to, to expand a little bit more into this direction. Uh, so, I, I just uh, threw in a couple of ideas uh, and uh, I'd like well, now Luca to share his view on his experience in geodesign class this year. Thank hello. you. Hello, uh, Luca, please. Hello. I will present you the experience with the geodesign uh, from the student point of view. In our case, we dealt with the geodesign approach throughout the school year, we, which represent two semesters and with that two studios, planning and uh, design studio. Uh, planning studio, where we dealt with the strategic spatial plan of Slovenia, required a different approach from the one that we usually practice. We got to know local and global trends and goals of given system, which, we, which expanded our knowledge. And it was this initial narrow view of the problem that allowed us to study and understand the systems closely. When we were connecting system, 
we acquired broad and interdisciplinary knowledge and a multidisciplinary understanding of processes, although the, perhaps the disadvantage is also strict division into systems, because we get to know the other systems to, uh, through our colleagues' presentations, and we did not follow their workflow all the time. Uh, this was particularly evident in the Geo Design Hub, where different groups of adopters, which included one member of each system, could sometimes perform uh, poorly. After all, for example, someone from the energy uh, uh, system had little to contribute to the social scenario of adapter, uh, while the group relied heavily on members from the residential and institutional system and their participation on previous uh, group work. Uh, it was good to gain experience in negotiation also, although here again it proved how important was the well done work in the first part of the semester. If a certain system group did not study the system in detail, they became vulnerable in negotiations. In the first semester, we dealt with national scale problems and were asking ourselves what and when we will solve it. But in the second semester, so in the design studio, we were asking how and where. And this was a major leap in the way of thinking. Um, a successful scale transition depended not only on the way of the transition, but also once again on the quality of the done work at the national level. Uh, while the problem was not the transition, but how interesting that transition was for the designing. While as planners, we were thinking about how we will solve the problem in the most successful, fast, um, most uh, plausible and financially feasible way. As designers, we were thinking how the problem will be solved that it, that it will be in the most interesting and sustainable way and that the solution will address the social economic problems of the local uh, space. And the most interesting and valuable experience was the evaluation. We tested the abstract ideas and goals in the specific local scale space. We evaluated uh, wherever the solution and design could be local at all, uh, or even regional or national, for example, biomass plantations. And that was not only around if it is possible, but also in what ways. And with that, uh, I would rate the transition successful and also challenging, but in a good way. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Thank you. I would um, like to, to uh, new share just a second. <coughs> Sorry about this. Um, just a second, let me see here, everybody. And we have some questions, but I would like to, to ask you to be um, a bit patient. We, we will have Jennifer, can you, will you be showing the, the entire presentation? Will you be giving me this, the, the sign? Sure. One, two. Okay, sure. thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so you, I should start now. Um, First, I'd like. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you very much. It's an honor to be included on the panel. Um, uh, first, I'll talk very briefly about the IGCs we were involved in, and then more about what we talked about the panel when we prepared for this about the the programs and the courses uh, offered in our uh, in our programs. Um, but also I'd first like to call out uh, that we have John Wilson in the room who was the creative force and founder behind all of our programs as well as the IGC projects. So um, for me, my inspiration, we go back to that first, the first prompt was, um, I loved teaching in the geo design program, the first one, the first class I taught back in 2013. Um, it's an undergraduate program. And then this IGC much later was just a fantastic inspiration. It was, uh, the focus of the project was Northeast Los Angeles, which has um, unprecedented uh, gentrification and drought uh, within it. And so in terms of teaching this first IGC, um, SSI offered a special topics course uh, for this project, and I included a link to that syllabus. 
Um, they're a group of six undergraduate students. They were at varying degrees in the programs from freshmen to seniors uh, signed up for the project. And they had a lot, we were very fortunate in that they had lots of different backgrounds, environmental studies, architecture, even engineering, as well as the geodesign majors. So that really was good luck <laughs> on this first project. Um, and I could, if their time permits, I can go back and, and talk more about this one in yeah. detail, if you like. Yeah, we can we can move on. We are, we are a bit tight on the on the time. Uh, sure. And we will have we will have, I hope we will have time also for for discussion. Okay. Lead me, lead me, Jennifer. Do you want me to go? Uh, to the next? yes. That I just say leaving this mm -hmm. one and going to the next one one of the yeah. primary teaching lessons you can go to the next slide was that one semester was very short so even when you look at that syllabus uh, when the students are starting entirely from scratch there's was not sufficient time to engage stakeholders because they did everything devised everything so in the second igc project rather than a semester special topics course uh, john wilson created the geodesign fellows program for undergraduates as part of the university academic honors and fellowship program and it's a year-long commitment by the students and it's a very competitive scholarship which is open to applicants all across the university so for example those three students show there who are presented their work were uh, urban studies and planning. Um, that was Lily, uh, Sarah, a uh, geodesign major, and Jackson was environmental studies and archaeology. So uh, they chose to focus on a much bigger study area, LA, and focus on how to uh, criteria for searching for super blocks. And because it was a year long project, they were also able to create three sub projects were within ideas of what they thought would be so critical for LA within the super block area, such as improving the street improvements, elementary schools and engaging elementary school children in, in educational activities about uh, a sustainability. Uh, so a big part of this one was focused on sustainability and contact, connecting disadvantaged communities, disadvantaged in terms of geography and access and equity to things like parks and recreation, as well as uh, diverse uh, communities. Next slide. So we have this uh, wonderful Geodesign Fellows Program. Um, there's uh, much more information available if you'd like to take a look at it uh, on the website. So for example, this past uh, this past year, it focused on um, uh, COVID-19 and the COVID-19 impact. And in, in particular, um, homelessness is a raging, raging issue in Los Angeles that affects everyone, even if they don't realize it, uh, especially in the wake of the pandemic. Um, so I, I, okay, I think we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> no, we're in a hurry. So we have a, a BS in geodesign and a BS in global geodesign. And again, uh, the founder of these, uh, uh, these degree programs was uh, John Wilson. And uh, their, their focus of, of, uh, of uh, the Geodesign program is to bring together all of these, uh, uh, you know, subdisciplines. We have um, the geographic information science, um, working with big data, architecture, landscape architecture, and urban and regional planning, so that the students can address really big problems. And then the much newer uh, global uh, geodesign program is is fascinating right now at it's currently uh, coordinated between the us spatial sciences institute and Varai university in amsterdam so the students get to build on like a basic li liberal arts foundation and do through interdisciplinary courses and the idea is that uh with the global geodesign is that they will it really it will really and truly be global and they'll do um, studios in other countries and from the very beginning of the program they're networking with the faculty around the globe so next slide so i will promise i will not talk about all these classes but i wanted to show this based on our planning 
for this panel because it kind of, it shows the flow of the curriculum. And this curriculum developed over many years um, and we added courses and took courses away. And what was interesting is I go back to Tiana's first prompt about what was the impact of the capstone. So when the first cohort got to the capstone, we learned a lot about uh, what they what they were comfortable with, um, what else they needed to know. And so new courses arose. The principles of geodesign is an introductory class um, uh, to geodesign. So it, it, this has been a, a fantastic addition um, that traces foundations, guiding principles, it's paper and pencil, as well as basic GIS, for example, with Agal. And it, uh, it focuses, like it, it explores a whole framework for geo design that, uh, that Carl found. So at the end of that class, they, they learn we a lot of different case studies. They get some examples. And then another newer core course included was the statistics for spatial sciences, because we found that statistics fundamentals in spatial analysis is really critical for the theory and the applications of spatial analysis and analytics that they'll get later in that bottom class. So the, the bolded um, uh, courses are ones that have heavily evolved or are new so that uh, uh, the spatial analytic analytics course for example I taught the first offering back in 2013 has vastly evolved and how these evolved is a is a kind of a wonderful collaboration among the geodesign faculty Lele Duans here I think and John Wilson and Darren Rudell and all the uh, Laura Leola who's our director of undergraduate study and really has a uh, uh, is a wonderful like support and resource for all of us these courses actually evolve every single semester we teach them and that's really uh, incredibly difficult <laughs> but we find that we get so much wonderful feedback from our alumni, as well as the students towards the end, that really helps us and informs us, as well as, you know, being out in the world. For example, the geo design practicum was taught by Darren Rudell this past fall. And the students, the whole thing is focused on real clients and stakeholders in the classic geo design framework and, and workshop. And, um, so it's kind of the culmination of this. Um, in the architecture sequence, all architecture classes, planning sequence, it's a combination of real estate development as well as urban planning. And then as you can see with their elective groups, they can really choose from a wide variety of things. So what happens is when, when I get like a class in, let's say the geospatial modeling and customization, which is a much newer course, which we introduced uh, I'd say about, I think halfway through uh, how long the program's been going on. Uh, at the, uh, they, I have such a wide variety of students. They're not just you design majors and that in itself really enriches the whole experience in particular when they do group projects and in class and things because they see that they also have the potential to take other things in the electives groups uh, to reach out you know, even as an undergrad into uh, learning about uh, lots of different um, tracks, is that if that's the right way to put it that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, uh, like a lower level, the maps and spatial reasoning class is open. It's a 300 level class and attracts students, um, really even a much bigger bright variety of students to it. And that's been that's evolved a lot. Uh, since the beginning to include labs, for example. And we're very fortunate, um, you'll see a note in, in the chat uh, by John, uh, that we have a huge number of students to um, call on uh, for IGCs um, with very diverse backgrounds. And um, uh, let's see, what was there any other? have like lots of notes, but for the commitment and support, uh, Tiana's prompt, um, we have incredible commitment and support from these other schools 
they're entirely different schools, architecture and planning from Dornsife, under which is spatial sciences is the college. And that happened because of the, I'd say the foresight, the, the ingenuity or, or a force, you know, forcefulness <laughs> of um, how important this kind of a degree, interdisciplinary degree is. And uh, uh, through the leadership of like of John, as well as leadership within those uh, other schools had to be there to, for this to happen because we share all the enrollments, right? Across these three schools. So that's quite a, a exciting, I'd say innovation in the education. Um, so that's it for me for now. And I, I included lots of links. Um, and all of these courses, the spatial sciences, the core courses, the spatial sciences sequence and the capstone, we have very detailed syllabi on the website for that include like schedules and um, very detailed objectives and I and um, criteria and how they run like weekly formats, group projects, it's all in the syllabi. So that's right. a, it's a nice source. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jennifer, that was wonderful. So we have the designers, no? This is, um, how are they called when they finish this? Are they called geo designers? I heard somewhere they shouldn't, there is no geo <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm really sorry that, that we went, we, we have uh, perhaps, um, uh, I don't know if we will have um, permission from, from Brian perhaps to extend the discussion. I will look into the chat and to see uh, what, was, uh, what was discussed now. Uh, I would like to, um, to also invite you to please um, put in your, your word and your voice in the, in the survey if we don't do this now. Uh, comprehensively, uh, uh, we can we can uh, do it through uh, email exchange or do some kind of correspondence. So thank you, thank you so much for all this, uh, for all this uh, wonderful um, uh, inputs. And um, yeah, uh, so it be, uh, yes, it might be best to call for open questions at the moment because people can read the comments, and and we can run a little bit into this ten minute break, and you know, but. Um, yeah, okay, so not, I, I not too much. Okay, we will have to uh, record the, the chat. So does anybody want to ask um, open to raise the hand and gallery? Anybody wants to ask the question from the chat? Um, well, if nobody's speaking, I will ask my question. <laughs> which, Please. Oh, which, Carl has. Carl, too. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Brian, please. No, you, you, I, I mean, the, the framework that you showed in your, in your slide of, you, you know, reflections, revisions, oh, sorry, inspirations, reflections, revisions, and aspirations, commitment, and support is, is really helpful. But, um, you know, the, the, the survey that you've got is directed towards education. Is, is it worthwhile for us to survey this IGC community? Because that last piece, commitment and support, is really, you know, what, what's the source of the commitment? Why do people want to be part of this community? And what can we do as a community to, to continue that support? So for me, in, in, if the people do, do go to the survey and share their voice, I think that they want to... Uh, have the support, and they are they they already have the commitment. Uh, uh, support can be can be structured. We don't have to have a, uh, we can have the the different kind of activities and different kind of um, uh, perhaps different rhythm of uh, of meetings uh, in order to foster this the, the support. I was also inspired by what uh, what Jennifer said that people are really uh, uh, supportive when they see something it's worth a while that that something makes sense. So I think that we are also here because we do believe that this makes sense, and uh, we would like to to improve our our uh, experiences in in pedagogy and in in real life as well, I suppose. Um, Carl, I 
I just wanted to say that that I just wanted to say that listening to this to this session that Tiana that you've organized with the experience, the the varied experience in these schools has been very interesting and I think very very useful, because almost everybody, even me in 1965, had to fight these same issues in at Harvard. Uh, I I'll tell you all a story. My first studio was a joint studio between landscape architecture and planning, and the planning faculty refused to let its students work by computer. They insisted that they work in magic marker and tracing paper. And I had four volunteer students, four, who would work with me making the first regional plan digitally, ever. All four of those people have had extraordinary careers because they were adventurous. It took them two and a half months to organize the data and two weeks to do the design. Everybody had maps full of things, but they couldn't use the maps. These students could. And I think this, the idea that we're showing how each other can, their, the experiences, sharing curricula, really important. Actually sharing experiences where you realize one or two schools are ahead of you administratively and ask them to talk to your administrators. That's really, really helpful. Really helpful. Because I think these programs are growing and growing very fast, actually. And most of us are still working, most of you, not me, are, are working under the administrative structure and despite the administrative structure. And actually turning that over and making more generalists is really, really important. The people who run complicated projects have to think complexly. They can't be focused on one level of detail in research. They have to be sufficiently broad and sufficiently deep in something. And the only way that I know how to do that is to start working even if the rules don't allow it. And then show that you've done something interesting and useful. And then slowly people will change their attitude, sometimes fast, but usually slowly. That's normal academic progress in very strange institutions like schools. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. We have that, that this, this is wonderful. I love this chat. I cannot handle it right now, but uh, uh, it's great to have all this. Uh, we, we will record and I will uh, really look into the uh, some kind of summary and responses and uh, hopefully put all the emails and then we have the, the, the group exchange. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. We are a bit four minutes uh, uh, ahead, but uh, I, I will record. Uh, oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's still there. Uh, thank you once again. I hope that you will fill in the, the, the survey and that we will hear your voices and that we will continue into looking at how we can improve each other and how we can support each other in this, in this wonderful adventure. Thank you. <laughs>